Welcome, my dear students. This is chapter number four today. We are going to talk about it, about the uh, culture. Uh, we'll talk about a lot of points, like the five components of culture. And some people are adding more components, more than five components of culture. Some, some people are adding more than five components of culture. Let's go point by point and see what is there, what we have today here to talk about. And um, I hope everything will be fine. So let's go and see. So first of all, the culture, the major elements of culture, actually, they are the language, as we said before, norms, values, artifacts, and language. Uh, there are cultural theories as well. And those culture theories is very important for us to know, uh, know something about it. Uh, the culture theories, we have a lot of them. Those culture theories is just trying to interpret why the person is involved in a culture group. What are the basics for a person to involve within a uh, uh, group of people? And also, it's given us um, an example um, about the types of cultures and the relationship between the people and their own culture and joining a group, how it looks like. So we have, uh, even in the organization as well, we have clan culture, advocacy culture, market culture, and hierarchy culture. Uh, we'll talk about each one in details, but let us know something about the clan culture. This working environment is friendly. It's a friendly environment when there are people are working there in the clan of culture. Adocracy culture is a dynamic and creative. Hierarchy culture is a kind of like when you say it's like from, uh, it's like, looks like the army, looks like the bishops in the church. It's a kind of ordering from the top order and going downward. As example, if you go for a college, as example, you have a professor. Then you have professor assistant. Uh, then you go downward till you find the instructor at last. So the hierarchy means descending or ascending in the orders of the people. It's a kind of culture based on the elder and or the one who's having very experienced, the senior and the junior. What are the cultural particulars? What are the particulars of any culture? What are they? Uh, cult cultural particulars um, like traditions and practices that are unique to an, any culture. They are uh, very important for any culture. These particulars may be fundamental importance to the population in indicative of uh, the uh, need to study the sources of cultural diversity. So. The next question is, what is the cultural differences theories? So we have theory about cultural differences. So what is this theory about? The cultural difference theory is based on the idea that students who are raised in different cultures, sitting may, be, may approach education and learn it in different ways. So based on the way I am raised up, based on the way I'm educated, I will understand according to the backgrounds, my backgrounds. I might interpret everything based on my back education, my back home experience, my back home culture in, in, in brief. So people from different cultures, traditions may have an approach to education that differs from mainstream approach used in some other schools. It's talking about America because uh, um, the, the book was issued in America. So, What's critical issue, critical cultural theory? What about the critical cultural theory? What this kind of theory? Uh, critic of society and culture by applying knowledge from the social sciences and the humanities. So we will put the knowledge, we will put the theories and try to interpret why the culture looks like this. Critical theory maintains that ideology is the principal obstacle to human liberation. And this also, we talked about this idea before. The way you are 
uh, the thoughts which you have, your norms, your values, is the one which will control and restrain your behavior. So this is the principles of obstacles of human liberation. What is the goal of critical theory? Now, what we the goal of the critical theory? Critical theory drawing particularly on the thoughts of Karl Marx and Sigmund Freud. This is the critical theory. It's based on the ideas of Karl Marx and Sigmund Freud. Critical theories maintain that a primary goal of philosophy is to understand and to help overcome the social structures through which people are dominated and oppressed. Uh, I will put links down for some videos that will help for the critical studying the critical theory, studying the cultural theory, and knowing the differences between them. What are some of the primary theories? So let's go for the cultural theory and understand what is the meaning of the cultural theory. So uh, what we care about now is that the critical theory maintains that ideology is the principal obstacle to human liberation. What are the goals of the critical theory? What are the goals of the critical theory? Critical theory drawing particularly on the thoughts of Karl Marx, like we said, and Sigmund Freud. Critical theories maintain that the primary goal of philosophy is to understand and to help overcome the social structure that which people are dominated and oppressed. Okay. What are the sum of the primary theories in the cultural anthropology? This can be considered as general summarized reading of the important anthropological theories, like evolution, the, the evolution of a human mankind or whatever, the, diffu the fusionism and the historical particularism and functionalism, uh, all those are types of market of uh, cultures. So how we will signalize between one, one of them and the other. So now we will move into the OPEC theory. Uh, classism, which emphasize from romanticism, which emphasize values of the imagination and realism, which emphasizes depictions of life as it is. The cultural epoch theory, a culture is founded upon whatever conceptions of reality is held by the great majority of its people over considerable period of time. Also, we need to know about the cultural theories in sociology. Cultural theories in, in the branch of comparative anthropology and semiotics, like we said before, uh, not to be confused with cultural sociology and cultural studies. So uh, you don't have to be confused between those two terms that seeks to define the heuristics concept of culture in operational and scientific terms. Now we will move into the culture reproduction theory. We are talking about the cultural theories. So uh, cultural reproduction is the transmission of existing cultural values and norms from generation to another generation. So how the cultural norms will move from one generation to another one, this is, we call it culture reproduction. Cultural reproduction is referred to the mechanism by which country continuity of cultural experience. So still the, the, the culture is continu continually goes from one generation to another generation, is sustained across the time. Uh, this was just a little bit synopsis about the culture theories. And I will move now into the questions of this part. We will solve these questions together for your next assignments, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. So this is about the culture uh, reproduction theory. 
and how it works and the mechanism of the, this kind of critical theories. Uh, this was a short synopsis about the cultural theories. And I will write links for videos to see about the cultural theories here. Please watch it and be ready for, um, for having these questions regarding this chapter. Thank you so much. So here at the end of this class, I just want you to take a time to think and answer the following questions. Question number one, how does your culture regulate your behavior at home and in public? So as example, how will you act based on your culture? What the things you ought to do, what the things you ought not to do? As example, if you can you talk with a loud voice in the transit, public transit? Can you laugh and joke and with a loud voice as example in some places which you should show a kind of respect or whatever? Uh, how you are dealing with the elder people? Are you raised on the culture that respect the elder people or no? So those all, how is your culture regulating your behavior at home and in public? So I want you just to go for answer for this question. Analyze in what way does the culture of your school conflict with your home or your college as well, school or college? Do you feel a culture shock? The culture shock is something will happen to you when you come from other societies into here in society or the opposite. Culture shock always results in a kind of resistance for what's new for you. Or you have to adapt to make adaptability till you become familiar with the new culture. Uh, how you will manage the conflicts? Are you going to have a resistance of a change or are you going to acquire the differences and respect the new culture which you are here in? So what are you going to do? Just think about this. You can Google the answers as well. Also, you can write in your prose and culture theories and you will have lectures about culture so you can go through it and read it. Discuss with one example, how did art, art like music, we said those are one of the components of the culture. So how did arts preserve the culture of your back home? How did your culture of your back home became the same, never changed because of one kind of arts or one type of arts had been never changed and had been transmitted through the generations. Do you agree with all the cultural practices and beliefs of your family? Are you okay about anything that you took from your family as a culture, norms, behavior, values, attitudes, and you want your kids to have it in the future? Or there are some of them you, don't, you dislike, like what? Things or beliefs or whatever. You can write it down. Why do you think these areas are continuous? Okay, so you have just to think about this point and write down your beliefs in this. Search Google, Google it, search your answers, and we will have a discussion about it on the next class. Thank you so much. Appreciate it for your listening. Thank you.